Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Roundtable, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing Season 1 of Good Omens. This series is expressly available on Amazon Prime, I believe, or um, Amazon Movies or Videos. But anyway, so, Good Omens. This series came out a while ago, and to be honest, I have been really busy with school and work and travel, and I have not really had a lot of time or made a lot of time to watch movies. But this summer, I was like, you know, I had one in May to June. I worked literally over 50 hours a week. And June, I also worked over 50 hours a week, but I spread it out over six days, so it wasn't nearly as daunting as before. But still, I was like, we're now in July, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, there's only so much I can do the 50 to 60 hour a week thing and be any similitude of a human that I like. <laughs> and I'm like, I that by myself, but... I don't like me some days when I'm really tired and literally collapsing in bed at 9 or 10 in that evening because I am totally exhausted. So I was like, something has got to give. So I literally sat out and forced myself to watch movies over the past few weeks. The main reason being is I'm like, when I lived in the States and when I lived with Bob, I would take time for those things because there was someone else there to watch them with. So I didn't feel like I was just taking me time, but it was like, together time with other people which is wonderful but i'm like you can take time just for yourself too so good omens was the start of my working on me time and cultivating that i'm like i am 30 something i should have this all figured out but the thing that i'm realizing as i get into my 30s is i'm like i'm much more gentle to myself than i was in my 20s but i still have to kind of give myself grace as i cycle through this. So anyway, I sat down and I watched Crawley and Aziraphale. And to be honest, I found this series absolutely charming in a dark humor kind of way. Because ever since I was a child, I have loved British humor. I remember my family sitting there going, she must have taken over the British side because no one else is like this and we don't get the humor and it's strange. But then I sit down and watch Good Omens and I'm like, these are my kind of humor. <laughs> but anyway, the story follows Azarafel and Crawley. Crawley is a demon, Azarafel is an angel. At the beginning of Earth, they were in charge. Crawley was the demon that tempted Eve as the snake, and Azarafel was the angel with the flaming sword, which he gave to the humans because Eve was pregnant, darn it. And they've only been here a day. <laughs> And I love the back and forth banter between Crawley and Azarafel. I think this is one of my favorite shows for the camaraderie of friendship. I know that sounds kind of strange because usually we have like romantic interest. But I think one of the reasons that I really enjoyed this show, and I watched some of the Real of Time, but quite frankly, it was just a little too violent for me, to be honest. I'm like, I don't like seeing people's entrails. I don't like that kind of blood and gore. It's just not my thing. I mean, I'm not against it. I'm just sitting there going, you know, I don't even like watching Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman when they cut open somebody and try to remove that appendix. But I'm like, uh, see if can. But anyway, it's like in real life, blood does not bother me at all unless it's my own. But on TV, I'm like, I don't like seeing that. That is just kind of gross. I like that we have skin that covers that. But anyway, the one thing I did like about the Reel of Time was the main female warrior character in that and her relationship with her basically assistant. And that it was not romantic at all, but that they were very good friends and understood each other perfectly. And all the warrior women had like assistants like that. And I know that some people are like, well, why can't they have romantic relationships? But quite honestly, I think that oftentimes the best romantic relationships I've ever seen, both in real life and in screen, like for example, let's take Malik from Shadowhunters. I really ship my leg from Shadowhunters. I discovered them recently, too. I was like, wow, they are a great couple. I mean, 
everything aside, I'm like, the, the rest of the series is not really that great, but Malik, Magnus, and Alec make up for that. So I'm like, but that's a digression. But my point is with Crawley and Aziraphale, you have this angel and this demon, and everyone's like, they could never find anything to agree on. But the thing that I love about this series is it makes it so that, yes, there are things that are bad. And yes, there are things that are good. I'm not one of those people that says everything is a gray area. We cannot know. Because I'm like, on some things, I'm going, logically, I know for certain, certain things are not a good idea. Because they will hurt other people. They will cause other people harm. I'm like, that is never a good plan. But then on some things, I'm like, you don't have to put up a fight on every little thing, which I think sometimes people forget about. It's like, we can live peaceably. It's like I was talking with one of my students yesterday, and they were doing a discussion on fulfillment with me for our ESL lesson. And they said, well, I'm Buddhist, but I'm really an atheist. I'm like, well, you know, whatever works for me. He's like, well, what are you? And I'm going, what am I what? And he said, well, what do you believe? What gives you fulfillment in your relationship and religion? And I'm going, number one, I'm not very religious at all. <laughs> and I was like, number two, I was raised Jewish. So he's like, oh, so Judaism gives you meaning to your life. And I'm going, well, you know, from my experience in life so far, I said, it's not really about religion so much as it is about your moral code and how you choose to be kind to others. I'm like, you know, I've met Jews, I've met Christians, I've met Muslims who are both good or bad. I said, it really isn't so much about their religion as it is about what they choose to be and who they choose to exemplify in their life. Are they going to be the best of themselves? Are they going to be the worst of themselves? I'm going, you know, Religion will only take you so far, but your own moral center is what is going to propel you to be a decent person or to be a not nice person. And he's like, oh, he's like, so it's not Jewish. I'm like, it's about being kind and it's about being nice. And I'm going, if people are that way, I think regardless of religion, they've got a leg up in society. And he's like, huh, I'm going, now on to fulfillment in our lives. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going, I don't like existential discussions, but if we're going to have one, let's, let's have one. <laughs> but anyway, so you have Crawley, the demon, and you have Aziraphale, the angel. And they seem to be so wide apart in their beliefs. And their sides are fighting against each other for centuries because they want to have this big knockout, drag out fight at Armageddon. And the thing I found was interesting is I have never thought of angels and demons in quite the way that the person that wrote the series, uh, Neil, I forgot his last name, I'm sorry. I think his name's Neil, bear with me one moment. Um, now I, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I have never thought of angels and demons like Pratchett and Diamond describe it because I'm like, you know, it's funny, but I have read a lot about angels and demons. When I was a kid, I read the Bible several times, like over seven times when I was a kid because my family was deeply religious. I'm not deeply religious, but it was something that we did. And I'm like, so I've read the Bible thoroughly. I've read Jewish texts, I've read Christian texts on angels and demons. And I'm like, I have never considered angels and demons like Pratchett and Gaiman give you the idea of because I'm like you know it's very interesting because in religious sectors whether you're talking about Christian or whether you're talking about Jews with Christians they believe there's going to be an epic battle between good and evil and it's about the ones that are saved by Christ fighting the demons of the world but what I thought was interesting, as well as the angels, of course, but I'm going, what I thought was interesting about Prasha and Gaiman's viewpoint, shown through Crawley and Aziraphale, was it's really not about the humans at all. I'm going, you know, 
when you think about it from a logical standpoint, using the ancient texts from which Armageddon is derived from, I'm going, it's really not about the humans. We make it about the humans because, well, it's nicer to make it all about humanity. But I'm going, in the end of things, it's really not about humans. And the thing I've always wondered ever since a child was I was like, you know, everyone in Christianity and Judaism, a lot of them are like, oh, the devil is a horrid creature. And they're going, the devil is only as horrid as their creator allowed them to be. So my question has always been, why on earth did we make a creature that we knew would fall? I'm like, that is just a weird thing. And I totally get it's about free will. So I understand that there's this whole free will thing wrapped up in it. But I'm going, like with Crowley and Aziraphale, they are only able to do what they are able to do. It's like there's a comment with Crowley where he's going, well, you're an angel. You can do nothing wrong, Aziraphale. And Aziraphale's like, I don't know if that's true. And I'm going, you know, it's funny to think about, but I think what Aziraphale's doing is he's like, you know, I haven't done anything that's particularly wrong, but I have done some things that were maybe misguided. And I'm going, oh, I totally get his error. It's like, you know, oftentimes in life, it's not the things that we do wrong that really backfire and throw us off into oblivion. It's the things that we thought we did right. And then we sit there and we go, maybe I shouldn't have given that flaming sword to somebody. Maybe that was a really bad idea, even though at the time it seemed like the practical thing to do to protect them. But in the end, that's going to come around and maybe bite me when I really don't want it to. I'm just saying as a random, non-specific example. But the thing that was interesting was they talk about how Armageddon happens with the creation of the beast child. And the beast child really isn't this terrible demon that everyone thinks of when they think of the beast in Revelation. It's just this kid who happens to have Satan as a dad, and he has to decide what's he going to do with that. I love how at the end of the movie, the child who's only like nine years old, I mean, let's face it, that's not very old for a kid to be able to make like life altering decisions on the fate of the world. But he's sitting there going, I choose to not destroy the world. There is no reason for me to destroy it. Just because all of heaven and all of hell wants to have this big battle does not mean that I want to have this big battle. And Satan may have been the one who's I came from, but he was never around, so I'm not going to claim him as my dad. And what I say goes on this deal. And I'm like, you know, that's a very interesting viewpoint. Now, I am sure that with some people that are religious, they're going to get a little upset with good omens. They might even make some YouTube videos or things saying that it's, I don't know, what's the word? Um, I'm trying to think of the word they used in the Spanish Inquisition for, oh, heretical. But I'm like, I really didn't find anything in Good Omens particularly heretical for people that would be Jewish or Christian. Now, there are some things which people that are Jewish or Christian might widely disagree with on Good Omens, and I totally get it. But the other thing that I think we need to realize about Good Omens is it is a comedy. It is not meant to be taken literally. It is meant to make us think and go, hmm, I never thought about it that way. And I think that's very interesting because like there's this scene where Crawley and Aziraphale are sitting there on the wall of the garden looking at Adam and Eve leaving the garden with a flaming sword. And Aziraphale and Crawley are talking to one another and Crawley says to Aziraphale, he said, you know, what if at the end of all this, I did the right thing and you did the wrong thing? What would that mean? And I'm going, you know, that is an interesting thing. Because I'm going, the temptation in the garden, according to the story, it's like, yes, the snake shouldn't have tempted Eve. But the other thing is I'm going, Eve decided to take the bait. And so I think that we need to deal with the fact that Maybe having the ability to have free will, even with the risks that that comes with, was not necessarily the most evil thing. Now, of course, they got cast out of the garden. It ended up badly, you know, up to Noah's flood. Everything went kind of down the drain, literally. But I'm like, in the end of all things, I've always thought that free will is very important. It's like 
we don't want to be a world of automatons that we only do what's right because you know it's programmed into us we want to do the right thing because it's the right thing it's like i was talking with one of my acquaintances here at Wybeck, and i was like the thing that i find really impressive in people is not that they do the right thing. I said, it's easy to usually do the right thing. The thing that I find really impressive about people and extremely noteworthy, as they say in The Secret Life of Water, Mitty or Notable, is when people do the right thing without, with the full belief that no one will know they did the right thing. When they do something noble and good without expecting anything good in return that is impressive to me i mean if we're going to be giving out awards i'm like give it to those people who think that no one's going to see what they do it might be something that is just totally oblivious to the world but it is so good i'm like that is really impressive but anyway back to good omens i'm sorry for the ramble but at the end of the day with good omens crawley and aziraphale they are supposed to, Crawley is supposed to deliver a baby, the beast, to the parents. And he switches the babies by accident. Or actually, the satanic nun switches the baby. The chattering satanic nun. It was funny. I mean, no offense, I'm going. Uh, that was a little irreverent, but very, very funny. I'm like, the chattering satanic nuns. Huh. Evil comes in many forms, chattering. Okay, noted. But anyway, so the chattering satanic nun by accident puts the wrong baby with the wrong parents. So for nine years, or I think it was nine years, the demons think that the kid is this one kid when actually it's this other kid. And Crawley realizes his big snafu when the beast dog comes to the wrong child. And he's like, oh. Maybe, maybe we, maybe we, maybe I screwed that up. So he, he messages um, Azarafel and he's like, I think, I think we had the wrong kid. And, you know, maybe since you're the angel, maybe you can kill the beast and then he cannot start Armageddon and people can go about their lives and we can continue to be like clandestine angel demon cohorts that do each other's work that isn't too bad when we happen to need to be in the same town and we don't want to commute so you can go do this i can go do that <laughs> i just find them adorable i'm like they're really really good friends i'm like totally like way better even than frodo and sam i mean frodo and sam are awesome but sam was way better than frodo i'm like with crawley and Zarafel, they both have each other's backs in such wonderful ways it's adorable in a nice way, not in like a fluffy, um, actually fluffy ways are sometimes nice if they're plushies, but that's another subject. But anyway, so Azarafel and Crawley try to stop Armageddon. They have to go through so many things. The four horsemen come to try to destroy the world. The beast comes and stops the four horsemen, turns them back to dust. The Four objects are put back into containers. The deliverer who died is put back to life and has to tell his wife what a day he's had. And at the end of the day, Crawley and Azarafel are hoisted up into heaven and down to hell to deal with the fact that they stopped Armageddon. And so the angels and demons cannot fight one each other. And they've been wanting to do this for hundreds of years. I'm like, you know, maybe you could just have a cup of tea and talk it over. I don't know. But anyway, so they decide they're going to destroy Crawley with holy water and they're going to destroy Azarafel with fire. But they try to destroy Azarafel with fire and he just stands there and is like, oh, it doesn't bother me at all. And they send him away because they can't figure out how an angel cannot be destroyed by holy fire. And Crawley's sitting in the bathtub of holy water just going, huh? Ah, doesn't seem to be bothering me at all. And the demons are like, <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, it's kind of cool to see the demons all freaked out. And also Beelzebub played by um, Rosemary, is it Rosemary, Rosalind Pike? Let me see here. Yes, Beelzebub was played by Rosamund Pike and I'm going, that was, that was funny. But anyway, 
the angels and demons are scared of Crowley and the Zarephel. Crowley and the Zarephel meet at a park bench and switch bodies because they had done this, what we would call a sting operation, and survived. And Crowley's sitting there and he's going, you know, I think at the end of all time, it's probably not going to be Armageddon that both our sides have to worry about. And I don't think we'll hear from either one of our sides for a while. As I felt, you can just kind of chill for a bit because no one wants to work with me and no one wants to work with you. They're all too scared. And he's like, but you know, the humans eventually might try to attack the demons and the angels. You never know. I think that's going to be the big battle. And the feels like, oh my goodness, I didn't think about that. I need to go get a tea. <laughs> And that's how it ends. But overall, I would give this series an absolute 9 out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10. Except I didn't like some of the lower demons, like the one that hopped through the phone and killed everybody in the call center. That was a little weird. But I'm like, the rest of it, I really did like, even though it does have some dark humor. Also, you could watch this with most children. I mean, I'm guessing some children would be slightly frightened in certain parts, but I'm like, it's not really that scary. If my kid was seven to eight years old, I would probably watch the show with them, no worries. But my children would be intrepid little humanoids. So I'm like, this would not phase them at all. But if your child was slightly less intrepid, maybe watching this from their 10 to 12 would be better. I don't know. But I would say also the actors that they picked for this, I'm not really a fan of Doctor Who at all. Not to be bad to any of the Doctor Who fans out there. You do you, or you do who. But anyway, but I did really think that the actor from Doctor Who, I think his name is David Tennant, I don't know. Anyway, but I think he did a brilliant job as Crawley. I mean, absolutely splendiferous. And the same with the actor who played um, Azera film, Michael Sheen, I think is his name. Brilliant acting. Now, they are coming out with the new Good Omens 2 here in, I think, let's see here, on the 28th of July. So it's really coming up very soon. So if you haven't seen um, Good Omens, the first season, I would definitely check out. I was able to watch it in like an afternoon, maybe two in an evening, because I just kind of speed watched. Again, forcing myself, I'm like, well, I'm going to catch up all this right now. And once I got started, I was like, this is fascinating. I cannot wait to see what mayhem they will inflict later on. So I kept watching. Again, if you do have um, religious beliefs that you think this would be slightly offensive to, I really don't think most people that are Christian or Jewish would be offended in the least by this. Um, of course, there might be some that would be very, very traditional that could be disturbed, but I didn't find anything sacrilegious in this, even for people I know who would be very conservative. But again, you do you. So whatever you want to do that way. But I highly recommend Good Omens. It is Reporting fun, as they say. Check it at the round table. Bye.